Tactical Blue TV, the place where badass sheepdogs read, listen, and watch unique leaders who teach the science of law enforcement, tactics, and practical skills to coach the American cop. If you're a badass, this is your new home. Now, the man who catches speeders during his lunch hour, Hector Solis. Welcome back to Tactical Blue. This is your host, Hector Solis. I'm glad that you are back. And today we're going to talk about a little bit of the George Floyd in custody debt, plus a very important topic regarding focusing on victims against injustice and criminal profiling. All these events happening around the nation are encouraging some of you to speak out. The Minneapolis in custody debt of George Floyd sparked outrage among the public. I have seen some celebrity cops post snap of the in custody debt demanding justice. I haven't posted anything because I don't have all the facts to make an accurate and unbiased conclusion. George Floyd's full video doesn't present all the fa criminal facts. Yes, some of you are already biased against this case, and some of you are already biased against other cases. The truth about the case is that we don't have all the truth. The probable cause affidavit was released to the public. You can go to my website, www.tacticablutv.com and look up for this, look up this uh, podcast and you can read the whole affidavit. I would like to say the affidavit highlights all the details about the case, including what happened to George Floyd. However, the affidavit is less than two pages long. However, the affidavit is less than two pages long. I write longer criminal affidavits for public intoxication. I can see the reasoning behind expediting the arrest of former officer Derek Chauvin. The city and police leaders in Minnesota want to stop the destruction of their city. But does rushing a case hurt the defendant's or the victim's case? In fact, charting documents suggest a thin case in Floyd murders charges. But right now you are biased. Some of you are already crying and protesting about what I just say. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, you're biased. And let me explain why. Some of you who posted early on about the case don't know what you did. From now on, you will have a biased view. You didn't have all the facts before the probable cause of it was published. You let your emotions and the media encourage you to post and speak your mind. You are going to hurt victims, no matter the race, sex, or belief. Your criminal profilings will be weak. Consequentially, you'll be biased against suspects. If they, In the world of policing, you only have three types of people law-abiding citizens, victims, and suspects. You see, I didn't use the word criminals. Criminals are the people who've been through the court system and they were found guilty of their crimes. You can be labeling people out there as criminals. You will have a clouded judgment when they become the victims. Weak criminal profiling comes from the fact that you don't want to press harder and might have to use force to find the truth on your cases. Now, there is a difference between criminal profiling and racial profiling. These two terms are the most basic teachings of policing. Policing 101 dictates law enforcement officers must never use racial profiling. However, criminal profiling is a tool we must use every day during our tour of duty. Racial profiling is the use of race or ethnicity as grounds for suspecting someone of having committed an offense. That is a big no-no. On the other hand, criminal profiling uses the facts of the incidents to make an intelligent or methodical conclusion. These are, the, these are some of the facts encompassed in criminal profiling. One, the time of the day when the crime was committed. Two, the number of reports of the same crime in a specific area. Three, any suspicious people or vehicles based on the first two factors. Four, prior knowledge of the criminal activity in the region by beat cops. And five, investigative intel or other factors which contribute to the overall crime map. The use of these and other factors encompasses criminal profiling. None of the critical points mentioned above use race or ethnicity as a factor. Now, the problem with posting your opinion before the facts, although you might want to sound reasonable and encouraging of the public opinion, facts are facts. By posting individual opinions on your social media, you already demonstrated a criminal bias against former officer Chauvin. His chances of, of a fair trial are, are actually gone. Just like everybody else, they will convict him no matter what. Your biases are going to affect his case, but not in the lower courts where the verdict is guilty. Therefore, in his appeal process, probably all the way to the Supreme Court, 
the justices will ignore all the noise and see if the charges brought up against him are legal. They will test every single definition of murder and manslaughter against the state's penal code. They will examine the policies and procedures of the Minneapolis Police Department. If the test fails, he either will go free or get another trial with more appropriate charges. Then we're going to be back on square one. Now, your biases hurt victims. Now, let me switch to what this podcast is really about. One thing I hate about other law enforcement officers is the fact that they take one side. We are not here to take or choose one side or the other. We are here to make sure the law is enforced. No buts or ifs, enough say. Crime is our only enemy, not people. Crime doesn't practice one specific religion. Evil is not a particular person or race. Crime is everywhere, happening at this moment in every corner of the planet. From now on, your traffic stops will not be the same. You have this case in the back of your mind. You know what? You'll hurt people. I'm not talking about unjustified use of force or killing someone innocent. You'll hurt your partner because your weak criminal profiling thoughts will discourage you from looking further for a crime. You will confuse criminal profiling as racial profiling. You missed that gun. You killed your partner because you didn't want to be seen as a racist. You hurt the victim because you failed to ask the suspect questions that might seem discriminatory. Think about your career. You will change from now on because you couldn't wait for the facts. Your job is to find the facts. In every call for service, you must find the facts. Making assumptions about cases or calls for service kills officers and victims every year. Scrolling to social media, I have seen the destruction these peaceful demonstrators are leaving behind. Many small businesses owners lost everything. Three months of pandemic business revenue losses. Now they attempt to open their businesses to find their buildings and goods on fire. Who are we really hurting here? Ourselves. We are killing ourselves. Victims are what really matters. The victims of any criminal episode should be what matters the most to you. At this moment, because cops are focusing on riots and protecting the cities, you're missing out on crimes that hurt the most innocent of victims. Human traffickers are exploiting the chaos to traffic more victims. They're moving them from state to state. To them, they're not victims, they're commodities. Suspects are using the internet to target innocent children to make them do things they don't want to. Victims are getting kidnapped, torture, and murder. Some of you, some of them, in front of us. I have a video of a brutal murder perpetrated in front of hundreds of witnesses, but no one is going to speak out. A business owner trying to protect his store in Dallas was beaten to death on video. So why are you posting this in, in your social media accounts? Doesn't he deserve the same justice as hashtag justice for Freud? What about this lady? She was attacked uh, outside Target. She was taking her groceries out to her vehicle. She was attacked by protesters. They were dragging her down. They were hosing her down with chemicals, you know, with fire extinguisher chemical. Doesn't she deserve justice for her brutal attack? Every state has enhancements for handicapped victims. Isn't she a more vulnerable victim? What about our fellow sheepdog? He was killed outside the courthouse trying to protect it. He was shot. Doesn't he deserve justice by finding the killer and convicting him in a court of law? I mean, he's a human being like anybody else. He's a victim no matter the race, uniform, or profession he chose. You need to get your priorities straight. Get your fucking priorities straight. Some of you might want to stop being cops and find another profession. As one of my sergeants used to say, go out there to fight crime and suppress evil. Some of you can do that. Your priorities are to find and protect victims. Your precedents are not to post about a case that clearly you don't know shit about. In this case, your opinion is irrelevant and it's not going to change the crazy protester's mind. What you need to be doing is getting close to the community. You need to be stepping out of your office and your vehicle to speak with the public. Proof of this is Officer Dion Joseph. He has demonstrated one person can influence others to change their lives. His career among the residents of Los Angeles Skid Row taught him valuable lessons. Now, he has a, a TED Talk that I posted on my website. Go to my website and listen to him. Very powerful. The people who live in poor neighborhoods have issues too. Listen to their grievances and problems. I used to live in one of them. The drug use, fights, the crime, they were rampant. More people want to see you there. Despite what the media and other people say, most residents want to have a peaceful place to rest. 
when they see you enforcing what you consider insignificant or annoying calls might make the difference to them. They're not going to thank you, all right? Not going to happen. Not because they hate you, but because that puts a target on their back. They live there, remember. Today is the time to suppress evil. Stop posting and reading about this case. Go there and suppress evil. Make traffic stop. Ask questions. Protect the victims. If you see or feel something's wrong, press harder. Forget about the, I don't want the brass or the public to see me as a biased officer. Is that the mentality you have? Then get out. We don't need you. We need influential-minded cops, law enforcement officers who can distinguish between right and wrong. We need the type of officers who will find a victim of heinous crimes and do everything legally to protect them. We need cops who will do everything in their power to do right. We need cops who are mentally stable to understand some people are not, and they need help. If you want to be a paper pusher, so be it. Stay in the office, push papers, and collect your paycheck. Don't pretend that you're a cop and get someone else hurt or killed. It's okay. It's a tough job. It's not for everybody. All right? Now, there are some key points that I want to leave you with before I go. First, there are law-abiding citizens, suspects, and criminals in our profession. There's no black, white, Hispanic, Jews, Muslim, or handicaps. There's no such thing. Second, your job is to find the facts using the law as your sword. Use it effectively with dignity and respect for each person you interact with. Three, po stop posting about cases you can control. Clean your own house before commenting on others. Four, some people in neighborhoods where police are not welcome here want to see you there anyway. They can say it out loud because that will put a target on their back. Go out there and fight crime. Fit, fight crime and suppress evil. Use all your energy to find those evil people who harm the innocent. Six, fight like a sheepdog. If you are not fit to fight like a sheepdog, then move on. This job isn't for the weak or the cowards. Six, find the victims. Innocent people are waiting for you. Your job is to navigate through the muddy waters to find them and rescue them. You will get dirty, but it's worth it. And seven, seven, you're not discriminating. Whenever someone throws that phrase, you're a racist or you stop me because I am, insert here, it's just an excuse. Find the real reason why are they saying that. Some of them can be real prior bad experiences with other police officers, while others could be attempting to distract you. Believe me, it works in some jurisdictions. I've seen that. Eight, fighting crime is in discrimination. Criminal profiling is our goal. Now, if you, some of you feel offended by listening to this piece, then don't follow me. I'm not here to please everybody, but to tell the truth. If you feel angry, then you know which side you're on. But if you see some truth and feel inspired by this piece, go ahead and share, comment, and let me know what you think. Remember, don't be an ass, be an asset. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Tactical Blue. If you know other sheepdogs, share this episode. 